Welcome to Fernal Heath Baptist Church. Well, today our plan was to broadcast live from the chapel, but uh, as many of you will know, we've had, uh, to put it mildly, one or two technical problems. So in a sense, we're back to basics and I'm now recording at home. So uh, I hope you still find this uh, service to be a, a blessing and that God would really draw close to us as we draw close to him. Today we're celebrating uh, Bible Sunday. Now I think officially Bible Sunday was probably a week or two ago, but you know what we're like, we always do things at a slightly different time. But uh, let's just uh, gather our thoughts as we listen to a call to worship from Psalm 105 and verse one to four. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Shall we pray? Loving God revealed to us in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, Lord of all the earth, our friend and companion along the way, with joy and gladness we praise you. Loving God, as we draw near to you, draw near to us. As we seek your word, speak to us. As we confess our faults and failings, have mercy upon us. We are reminded of all you have done for us. And so, Lord, challenge us to make our response. Loving God, on this day we celebrate Bible Sunday, 
So inspire us once more to discover your will for our lives, to see you again and the wonder of your love. And so, Lord, for you to revive our minds, to acknowledge that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. Bible Sunday is an opportunity to celebrate, uh, to revive our passion for God's word. I heard recently that the story of the Bible is not so much about human beings searching for God, although that is a, an important part, but it's really about God reaching out to us. And soon, in just a couple of weeks, we'll be entering into Advent and we will look again as Jesus comes to us, the word of God made flesh. Here is God truly reaching out to us. So the Bible is something that we have that is tangible, is life-giving, and something that even today is not available to everyone in their own language. It is still being translated. As a church, we use Bible society material quite a lot. We've run the Bible course, uh, I think at least a couple of times now. We've used the uh, instant nativity material that is produced at Christmas. And with our Anglican friends from Martin Hushentree and Selborg, we go into Hinlip School each week and take an Open the Book assembly. Open the Book is 21 years old and there are now over 3,000 schools taking part. Obviously, we're not allowed to go into schools at the moment, so we record those assemblies and they're available on the church YouTube uh, channel. Yet Bible Society do a lot more than what I've just mentioned. And we're going to watch now a short video. It describes some of their work. There is an appeal for finance as well, but we're really just looking at this for, for information and to be encouraged and to be inspired as well. So I hope you enjoy this uh, short little video. There are people all over the world living without a Bible of their own and desperate to read God's word. Thanks to the support of people like you, millions of Bibles are printed and distributed each year in China alone. In Sub-Saharan Africa, thanks to your support, Bible-based literacy classes enable people with little education to read God's Word by themselves, using Bibles that people like you have helped provide. New Bible translations make God's Word available to whole communities. More than 200,000 scripture portions are distributed each year to our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, and Bible-based trauma healing is provided to those in need. More locally, in England and Wales, we're building Bible confidence and longing for a better conversation about the Bible in wider society. None of this, in China, Africa, the Middle East and here in England and Wales, would be possible if it weren't for your generosity and kind support. Every penny donated helps share the Word of God. And the youth edition of the Good News Bible, the Bible Course and the ever-growing Open the Book project that engages with children in school are just some of the ways you can explore and share God's big story for yourself. Challenges lie ahead as the world responds to the coronavirus pandemic, but in everything, the mission remains to share the good news of God's word. The better story of hope the Bible presents is more important than ever. I have uh, several Bibles at home. I have two versions just on my mobile phone. And yet 1.5 billion people 
are still without a Bible in their own language. There are over 7,000 languages in the world, but only 704 have the full Bible. This really came across when uh, I went to Malawi a few years ago. Lots of requests were made by the people. They had lots of needs, but there was one constant uh, request when people asked, have you got a Bible? Let's us just pray for Bible Society, for people like Wycliffe Bible Translators, and also there are some fellowship and uh, needs as well that we just need to lift up to God in prayer. So let's pray. Loving God, we pray for your blessing as we read your precious word. Your word that has been revealed through prophets, priests, kings and apostles, and most wonderfully in the wisdom of your son. So help us to hear your word and to share your word and to support and pray for those organisations like Bible Society or Wycliffe Bible Translators and others who are involved in bringing your word to those who have never heard it before. In the name of Jesus we pray. And Lord, we also remember those who are suffering. Lord, maybe friends or family, those who had the COVID-19. One or two friends we know in hospital. Father God, those who are waiting for appointments. Lord, all who are concerned about their health, Lord, we lift them to you. And pray, Spirit of the living God, touch each life with your healing and love. For this we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have some uh, friends with us this morning for our Bible Sunday, and maybe they would just like to introduce themselves. Good morning. My name is Catherine Asiku. I'm originally from Staines in Middlesex. I'm now living in Entebbe in Uganda. Good morning, Church. Uh, my name is Gift Asiku. I am a Ugandan and I work for Wycliffe Bible Translators here in Uganda uh, with Catherine. And we have two children, that is James and Simon Peter. And James is in year six and Simon Peter is in year four. And during this time of COVID-19, they are all learning from home. And James has just started lessons on Zoom last week. Mm. Well, that's uh, interesting because uh, obviously the coronavirus has impacted us greatly as well. And we've been following the situation closely in Uganda. Uh, Gift and Catherine are now long-standing friends. When we visit uh, Arua, we go via Entebbe and pop in and, and you always entertain us and uh, look after us. So it's great to see you again this morning. But just remind me of a bit more what you actually do and uh, maybe what you if you have job titles, just what you get up to in your daily work. I have a couple of job titles. I'm the literacy coordinator for Uganda and Tanzania which means um, I, I coordinate information and resources between the other colleagues working in the field of literacy, sharing information and keeping in touch with them. And if somebody from another organization is interested in working with us in literacy, they usually contact me and I liaise with them. I'm also involved in supporting the Bible translation projects in Uganda in the area of literacy. There's no point in having the Bible translated if people can't read it. So um, I help to produce literacy materials and uh, materials we call scripture engagement books and other things which help people to read and understand and apply the Bible to their lives. I also do some archiving, which these days is done electronically, so that all the materials we produce in Uganda are um archived online so that other people can see them and use them and learn from what we're doing and my role is uh, as a language programs coordinator this is a role for a manager i am actually managing the bible translation work in uganda 
particularly the language communities that are doing the Old Testament translation at the moment. Uh, I directly supervise five Bible translation projects for five different languages. And uh, all those languages have finished translating the New Testament and they're already using it. And now we are translating portions of the Old Testament. And most of them have done the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, and they are now doing the book of Psalms. And part of my role also involves um, liaising with the Wycliffe UK, Wycliffe US, and other funding partners and prayer partners like churches to pray for the work, to support the work, uh, to financially give towards the work. So I liaise with um, the partners uh, on behalf of the Bible translation work here in this country. Uh, just uh, another question. Um, what do you find has been encouraging for you? Any stories or any situations that recently you found to be really encouraging concerning your work in uh, the area of the Lord's word? Um, I would say really, um, particularly with this COVID-19 uh, restrictions in Uganda, we were not allowed to travel. And there were moments when, when it, you go to the bank ATM, there's no money in the ATM. Everyone goes very early and picks whatever money is in the ATM and you go, you don't find money. And, and there were moments when price of food went really up because uh, the, the trucks were not delivering food, the borders were closed. And really it became a very tough time for most of us here in this country. However, um, the most encouraging part of this period for me and for Bible translation is the fact that when the church doors, the church buildings were closed, people's churches at home were open, particularly in the areas where there's been translated scriptures where we're working, I've heard stories that the people were able to read their Bible more at home. They're able to connect to God without needing a reverend around. And that has been possible because the scriptures were translated into their language. And even though they may not know how to read it very well, they are still encouraged to try to read it because they know the language, they can guess the words, uh, or they can have a child in their home who has learned how to read in a primary school, is able to learn to read. So the scriptures became one of the ways in which they could continue to listen to, to God and read his word, which is already translated. Something they would not do if they didn't have a translated portion of the scriptures available. Thank you. Catherine? I think uh, one thing, yes, one of the highlights for me um, was in September when we were able to travel to um, a part of the country called Kapchora, which is where some of those very fast long distance runners come from. And Kipsisi and others who you may have heard of or seen running the London Marathon. And uh, we went to attend the launch of the New Testament in a language called Kupsapini. And uh, it was exciting that in spite of the restrictions, uh, the event was allowed to go ahead uh, with reduced numbers of people. We were seated a certain distance apart until the rain came and we had to wear masks and use sanitizer, but the event was still able to go ahead and people were very excited to have the New Testament translated into their language. And one of the reasons that was a big encouragement was that uh, Gift and some colleagues here in Entebbe were involved in getting that translation project started back in 2010. And uh, since that time, um, it has been uh, managed by the Bible Society, but with support from the organization that we're working with. 
And so it was, it was great to see that uh, translation work come to fruition and they published the New Testament together with Psalms and they're well on the way to translating the Old Testament al already. So it was great to be a part of that and, um, and to witness that, uh, that New Testament dedication. It's always exciting. You get a lump in your throat when you see people uh, reading the Bible in their language for the first time and you see the face, the smiles on the faces of, of the listeners. It's, it's great. Mm, it's fantastic. Is there anything that as a church we can uh, pray for you about uh, your, your ministry or your, your home life? Whatever you feel would be useful for us as a church to pray about. Yeah, I think there are a number of things. One is uh, uh, with the translation of the Bible, the devil is always um, in one way or the other attacking the work. We've had situations where our translators have been losing their dear ones uh, during the time when they're supposed to be doing consultant check or people falling sick of malaria or of diarrhea or their children falling sick. We really will appreciate the church continuing to pray for God's protection, for wisdom for the translators and their consultants, for safety for them. Um, we are also in a situation now when actually um, many of the New Testaments are still in the store where we're supposed to pick them and take them for distribution. And because the distribution is at a fee, most of the people are unable to afford them. And they cost about two pounds each. And uh, most of the communities where we're going are, not, are unable to afford to buy a Bible, but also they, they prioritize the food uh, over the Bible because the, it's, it's what they can eat. And uh, food has been a challenge. So we'll appreciate prayers for finances so that God's word can actually be distributed, but also for finances for our work here in this country, for either Bible translation or supporting Catherine and myself financially. So we'll appreciate prayers for that. Above all, we really appreciate prayers that the scriptures will be used and they will transform people's lives here in this country and beyond. I think for us as a family, we'd appreciate prayer for our children. They've now been off school since March. March. It's a very long time to be at home. And um, although they have neighbors and cousins here to play with, uh, they do um, miss their school friends. They miss the routine of going to school. Uh, we pray that they will continue to stay focused on schoolwork as we have teachers coming home twice a week. And James has now started some lessons on Zoom. Uh, we, we'd like them to be able to continue on to the next, move up to the next class when the schools reopen and not have to repeat the entire year, if possible. <clears throat> so that's one prayer request. Another one is that uh, the cases of COVID-19 are, are spreading quite fast here and uh, particularly in the border areas where many of our translation projects are based. And so we pray for protection upon our translation colleagues and their families working in those areas. Um, we are moving into or we are now in an election season here in Uganda with presidential and parliamentary election campaigning getting underway. So we pray for peaceful elections and peaceful campaigns leading up to the elections in, in January. Yeah, and we're really grateful and thank God that we are living in our own house. Uh, it's still under construction, but we are very pleased that the boys have space to play outside every day. There's football or tennis, and uh, it's just nice and to see that happen. And uh, we are really grateful to God for that. And we've been very healthy throughout this time. We praise God for that gift of good health for us. Thank you. And it's been lovely to just to share this uh, short time with you. 
get a little insight into uh, your life there and uh, what the Lord is doing through the distribution of the scriptures. And uh, But to see you personally as well it is lovely. We remember visiting when your home was just foundations. And uh, so you're actually living there now. So that is fantastic. And hopefully at some point in the future, a team from the UK will be coming out uh, and we can say hello to you in person once more. So God bless you. And we will remember to pray for you uh, and the work as well. Thank you. Oh, thank you. God bless you. And thank you for praying for us. Psalm 119, 105 to 108. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I promised it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. I have suffered so much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. Some time ago, small chapels like our own were heated by a large coke stove situated in the middle of the room. And I believe our chapel was heated at one time in, in a similar sort of way. I heard of one story, uh, I'm not saying this was from our chapel, but the duty steward, just before the sermon started, used to take one of those whistling kettles and place it on the stove. One time a visiting preacher came and said, well, that's a great way to time the sermon. You know, when the kettle whistles, it's time for me to finish. And the duty steward said, well, that's true. He said, but sometimes with some visiting preachers, I only half fill the kettle. Now, this sermon this morning is going to be only brief. So if you're going to fill a kettle, you only need to fill it halfway. Psalm 119 Verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. For many people in our country today, I suppose that doesn't ring true. If the Bible is in the home, it's probably dusty, left on the shelf, certainly unused and for a lot of people of no relevance and therefore not read. And yet for us who believe in Jesus Christ, God's word, the Bible, is a lamp to our feet and a light for our paths. You see, repeating something I said earlier, the story of the Bible is not so much about human beings searching for God. It's about God reaching out to us. And if we take time to open the book, and to read and to try and understand, we find that words of truth minister to our hearts as God reaches out to us. Through the words of the Bible, God touches our minds and our hearts. Through his words, he reveals himself, particularly through the coming of Jesus. And you see, many people across the ages can give testimony to the fact that the Bible has transformed their lives. These words of scripture are not dead, but very much alive. The words of the Bible light a way forward along the path of life, giving us direction on the steps that we need to take, or lighting up our understanding of God, of the world, and even of ourselves. People through the centuries have found the promises in the scriptures to give strength in tough times. Or words of encouragement when in despair. Or words of challenge when a new direction is required. Words of comfort when in a dark place. And many words of praise and thanksgiving. See here in the Bible we find God and we find salvation. This uh, particular Bible is my ordination Bible that I got from Spurgeon's College many years ago it's still just about intact it's a wonderful invention this isn't it paper and ink see many people watching will have one of those digital electronic forms of the bible on tablet or mobile phone or whatever but this is a wonderful invention 
watch what happens. I'm now going to boot it up. It opens. And there are the words of scripture. Now, here's the amazing thing. I'm now going to close it down. And this is unbelievable. Open it up again. And it's remembered all the words. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. What a great invention. You know, if the electricity fails or the batteries go out, I can still read my Bible. But you know, the most important thing, whether you read the Bible digitally, electronically, or through parchment like me, the important thing is to open the Bible and to read it. We are blessed that we all have access to education and can learn to read. We are blessed that we have a Bible in our own language. We are blessed that the Bible is available to everyone in our country. But we're truly blessed if, if we read it. In a couple of weeks or so it will be Advent and we have a great opportunity to engage with God in a fresh way as we journey towards Christmas. One of the ways we're doing that is through our daily reading uh, journeying through Advent, the little booklets that we've ordered. There's a Bible passage, there's a reflection, and we can really engage with the scriptures. And if you haven't ordered one, don't panic. I've got one or two spare ones up my sleeve, so just have a word with me. So may the Lord excite us about his word, and may it challenge us and transform us, and help us as well to be encouraged to Make it available to everyone in their own language. For truly your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Amen.